Grunge Paper is the newest set of free textures from StudioAAA.com, which is my website where I create one free design resource every single month. These textures were created with all sorts of like food items, flour, milk, tea, oil in water, inks, paint. I also dried them all in my oven and some of them really, really stank. So my house was a little bit smelly for a few days after I made this pack, but all the textures included were scanned in at 1200 DPI and there's tons of them in the full pack. I have put six of my favorites and six of like the most useful textures in the free version. So to get started straight away, I'm going to show you how these textures work, how I use them, and I'm just going to texture some design work with them basically to show you how best to use these files. So if you go to studio AAA.com, com slash free it's not there now but grunge paper will show up there when you arrive there when this video is done and there will be a free version so you can just select free where it says version and you will get textures that i'm going to use today might take a little bit to download because as i said the scans are really high quality so some of the files are massive as always if you get the full version you'll have more to work with but you don't need the full version for this video today these are the six textures that are included in the free version so i've gone for like a mix of really light textures and really dark textures textures here. That's deliberate and I'll explain why and explain why that's useful for you in a minute. Got this like pre-made design here that just says grunge paper free textures and it's got the little mouth graphic that I've been messing with quite a lot recently. So if you obviously get whatever it is you want to get, your logo or just some text or an image or whatever it is and from the free pack just pick one of the darker textures and one of the lighter textures, doesn't matter which two or you can pull in more than that but for now just go for a dark one and a light one. Pull those in and scale them up to be bigger than your document so they have like some nice coverage over your design they'll go a little bit low quality while you do that but that's fine so obviously my design is primarily white with a black background what you're working on might be different but it will still have highlights and shadows so I'm just going to talk about them in highlights and shadows so firstly I'm going to grab the darker texture that I chose because I want this to be applied to the shadow sections so you can do that with any of the lighten blend modes so that's any blend mode in this category here depending on obviously your image. If you look at all the pixels in this texture that I've got open here versus what we're applying the texture to, my design here in white is obviously lighter than any pixel that appears in this darker texture. So by using the light and blend mode or screen or any of these in this category, we're telling Photoshop that we just want to use this texture in areas where this image is lighter than what's below it. So that's why it's not going to show up in any of the white sections just yet. It can feel a bit backwards, but if you try and remember basically if you've got something that's dark I'm going to be using a light and blend mode on it and if we've got something that's light as you'll see in a minute we're going to use the darken or one of these darken category blend modes so darken and multiply are looking like the best two for what we want here but the issue is these textures are quite different and so they create this hard edge where it's very obviously textured if you look obviously this little I think these little stains here are little like it's where the flower had hardened as I said I used flour on these and I remember the ink or coffee or whatever it is I put on the paper with the flour uh, it would create these like cool little edges around the little granules of flour so yeah there's there's a very obvious like divide here so I'm going to duplicate the lighter texture that I picked and instead of using darken or multiply I'm going to go down into the overlay category now the overlay category with soft light hard light vivid light and so on all these blend modes are actually just combining the darken category and the lighten category so for example overlay combines lighten and multiply I think it is I've done a full video on explaining every blend mode so if you're curious about the specifics then you can go watch that video after this but what I'm looking for is a texture here that's gonna allow for some of this basically so you can see here that these little flower outlines are now crossing over the border from the highlights into the shadows so for me that's linear light gonna depend for you might be different or personal preference you might choose something else but I'm going to go with linear light then I'm going to right click on that texture and just click on blending options which is the first option and you'll get the layer styles menu open so you've got a few options here for advanced blending and blend if um, I'm just going to pull this out of the way for a second so hopefully you can still see what's going on if I pull in these little anchor points on the luminosity black to white spectrum here this top bar will just cut out any pixels that are darker 
than wherever you set the little anchor point at. And for the bar below it, where it says underlying layer, it just won't blend anything below. So because I've already got the original version of this texture up here, blending into the highlights, then what I want to do for this duplicate that's using linear light, what I want to do is pull in this anchor point for the underlying layer so that our linear light version of this texture is not going to blend onto the highlights. So if I pull that down as far as like here and just press OK, if we zoom in now, I'm zooming quite far because I, I don't know how well this comes across in the recording, by the way, but um, you can see now that these little elements, these little details will bleed through from the shadows to the highlights and vice versa. So it just looks a little bit more realistic. It's obviously still at a point where it is very obviously digital. So we need something to like tie all these together, basically. So I'm going to open back up the folder and I'm going to pull in this other dark one and this other light one that I've not used yet. Again, I'm just going to scale those up. And with the darker one selected, I'm just going to look for a blend mode that's going to kind of of flatten out some of the details. It's going to depend on your image, but you're most likely to find something that works with darken, multiply, lighten, or screen. Because if you get into the overlay category or any of these different blend modes, then you're like making the image more complex, or there's like quite a lot of blending going on in these. Whereas the lighten and, and darken stuff will happily like just overwrite a lot of detail. So for this one, I'm going to go for lighten. I might not need the other one that I pulled in, but I did think that color burn looked cool for this. This one uh, if a little bit too much so I'm gonna do color burn with the opacity just turned down a little bit now at this stage there's obviously some cool high detail texturing going on but the edges of our original design are hard and rigid and very obviously digital what would look cool and what does look cool is if you get something like this and actually print it out with your printer like normal at home printer normal shop bought printering that usually looks cool but for this video I'm going to show you a couple of ways we can make the text look like it fits in with the texture basically. So first thing to do, convert your design or whatever the highlights of what you're working on into a smart object. So if you've got text layers, logos, stuff like that, put them all into one smart object for this. Once you've done that, you can right click and, and just press convert to smart object by the way. But once you've done that, just press control, click on the little thumbnail for your design and it will select the design and then go to layer, new fill layer and go solid color and you can pick any color you want for this, but I'm just going to go with white. Just going to hide my original and then click on the layer mask. And to show you what I'm actually doing, I'm just going to alt click on the layer mask, but you don't need to do that. So when you alt click on the layer mask now, we're only viewing, if you go to channels, we're only viewing the color fill layer mask now. So I've already got it open here, but if you go to window and make sure you've got properties ticked, you will get two options for the mask, which are density and feather. We're just going to turn the feather up a little bit to blur the edges of our layer mask. If you click back into the textured version now, you can just click off that, click anywhere basically in the layers palette and it will take you out of the mask view. You can see it's not done much, it's just blurred the edges. So I'm going to add a threshold layer above the color fill and you can move the threshold around to create like a pretty basic ink bleed effect. Um, and if you wanted to, you can even move the threshold, you know, up through your textures and stuff, but I wouldn't recommend that just yet. From here, you can keep going back into the mask view and and you can add like filter gallery effects. For example, we could go into filter gallery and add like spread strokes and then press OK. And the threshold will just like flatten those out so they're not blurry anymore and make them look all like jagged and like it fits in a little bit more with the texture. If you would like some more thought out complex presets for this kind of thing, there is a pack on my site called Text Trasher, which is completely free and yeah, it has a bunch of presets. You can get that if you just go to the free page you went to at the beginning and yeah just uh, check out with this my favorite one is text trasher heavy so i'm just going to run that on my design here so now my text looks like it fits in a little bit more with the textures now this is looking a little bit dim and you can literally just add a curves layer or like a levels adjustment above everything here and just turn up the brightness but one thing i like to do is add a gradient map to my texturing so if you come down to the adjustments panel if you don't have that by the way you can just go to window and click on adjustments and and then this little one here is the gradient map. It'll load in like a default black to white. So you can click on this and it'll load up your gradient presets. You'll have all these presets, but for mine, I'm just going to add a new anchor point in the middle and I'm going to use that for adding some color. So if I go to like 
a pink and then if I add another stop for the color just above that and go for like a bright green and then just pull these color points around a little bit press ok on that I can then go and add a blend mode to that adjustment so if we went for overlay or like lighter color you can then also add some blend if to the gradient map as well that mess with like how subtle or you know the parts of the image that this is going to affect you can also pull the gradient map down below some textures to sort of determine which textures would be affected by the gradient map and which wouldn't so for me like if you look at this little section here this looks really cool when it's got the gradient map below the top two textures and obviously it looks way different when I put the gradient map all the way at the top so I'm going to move the colors around just a little bit more so we've got something a little bit more smooth and then just for the sake of it for the end of the video I'm just going to pull in one of the textures I didn't use so I didn't use this one number six I scale that up and let me see if I can find a way to use this one so the lighting category is probably not the best one these are kind of ruining it the difference is just going to look insane um but if I go for darker color we retain some of the original like gray scale from these textures but the gradient map is kind of coming through with the shape from this texture so for me that's done I really like this everything remains editable all your colors are editable you can move things around because we didn't like rasterize at all in this process and yeah I actually really like this I'm really surprised with this um I'm finding that the more I make videos the um the better I get at actually making something good in the video but when I first started I really struggled at actually making anything that was good in the tutorial itself so um yeah i hope you like this i hope this was useful for you before anyone asks i will link all the fonts that are in this design in the description but this one at the top here is called rs rain this one is dharma gothic c this one's Arial, and i think the rest is just Arial as well and then this little graphic in the middle, I already did a video on creating this. So this is just a blender of render that I did. Um, and of course, everything else you watched me make in this video. So like I said at the start of the video, if you like stuff like this, I am making one free download every single month for graphic designers and visual creatives at studiotriplea.com. I don't pay for ads and I'm really bad at promoting anything. So if you could share this video with any of your creative friends, that is the best way to help me out. Hopefully you couldn't hear the GTA style car chase that is apparently happening outside my house through this video um any questions let me know thanks for all the support on the channel and i will see you in the next video